Hello and welcome. Uh, we're going to solve this problem together, but first I suggest you pause the video, read it, and give it a shot. We know you can do it. Okay, let's start by reading the question. So the table below represents a linear function, and that just means a linear relationship where um, the rate of change is constant. Rate of change is constant. That's what, that's what this means. So let's look at this table. Even before I read this, um, I'm going to find the rate of change. I notice that y goes from four, 5 to 9, so that's plus 4. And x is going up from negative 1 to 2, so that's plus 2. And I notice it's constant, right? It happens again. We go up 4 and up 2. And then we go up 4 and up 2. So this means um, for every time we're increasing by 4 on the y-axis, we're increasing by 2 on the x-axis, and slope is the relationship, uh, excuse me, the ratio between those two. It's delta y, which is our change in y, divided by delta x, our change in x. That's just a fancy way, or it's a beautiful mathematical way of saying um, how much we're adding for our y over what interval in the x. Or to say it another way, uh, if we increase 4 in y, we increase four, 2 in x. So our slope is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And it just tells us um, it's the height increases 2 for every 1x. And here, we want to know which function, these are all functions themselves or equations, have uh, greater has a greater slope right, and a greater y-intercept. So we'll look at that next. So a greater slope. So our slope here is 2. So this, which of these have a greater slope than 2? How do we know? We could plug in values and make tables for each of them. Or we could recognize that the coefficient, the, the number next to x, represents the slope when you have an equation written in y equals mx plus b format. m is the slope, b is the intercept. So here the slope is 2, but we're looking for a slope that's greater than 2, so a can't be the answer. What about the intercept? How do we find that? Well, there's lots of ways to find the intercept in the table here for this equation. I'll show you two ways. I know that the intercept is on a graph. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. That's what a y-intercept is. So this line right here, um, right, this line right here is going to cross the y-axis somewhere, and that is called, that point where it crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. So what is the y-intercept? Well, we know we have the point negative 1, 5. That's a point, let's say, here. So it's negative 1, comma, 5. And they also give us the point, what is it, 1, 9. Here. So I know the intercept's between negative 1, 5 and 1, 9. But where is it? Well, our slope is 2, and that means that if y increases by 2, x increases by 1. Here, y increases by 4, from 5 to 9. But if we add 2 to 5, we get 7. And if we add 2, that's, that's 2 for every 1, that's what our slope is, we add 1 to our x. So x will be 0. So the y-intercept is on the y-axis, so x has to equal 0, and here x does equal 0, and y equals 7. So this y-intercept here is the point 0, 7. So we have, as an equation, it would be y equals 2x plus 7. 2 is, oops, 2 is the slope and 7 is the intercept. So that's one way of finding it. If you didn't like that explanation, another way of finding it is just to use the mx plus b structure. mx plus b. We know our slope is 2. That's what we found in this table. So y equals 2x plus b. And if we want to solve for b, that's b is our intercept. We plug in any point from the, the table. I'll plug in 1 and 9. 9 is for y. So y equals 2x plus b. So 9 equals 2 times x, or 1, plus b. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus b is 9. So 2 plus what is 9? Well, what do I have to add to 2 to get 9? That's 7. So b is 7. And that's our intercept that we found here as well. So anyway, we want to find a greater slope and greater y-intercept. And the only one that satisfies that is b because the slope is 3 and the intercept is 7.5, which is greater than 7. All right, I hope this helped.